Hi, it's Carrie. In today's 5 Minute Friday, I wanted to bring attention to something I don't talk about very often because I don't use it very often, but that is subheadings in PubMed with MeSH terms, medical subject headings. I think I might have done something about it in my PubMed school or search school. So if you can find that video, um, I think I do have a short one, but it's been a while. So let's go over subheadings and when it's appropriate to use them or not. And so the first thing I want to do is go into the FAQs and user guide. I just do control F subheadings. That shows you how to apply a subheading field tag. That's SH, we'll need that later. But then there's a section about subheadings here. So these are subheadings that are available to be used in combination, well, in combination with mesh terms or as floating subheadings. And I'm going to show you how to do both. And the funny thing is that not every subheading is available for every mesh term, you have to look at the mesh term and see if that's actually available. Um, so those are the available ones. And I think there's a way to search with this abbreviation, but like I said, I don't use it that much. So I'm gonna show you the way that I know how, and you can even read more about subheadings here. So it goes kind of deep. If you wanted to read more about subheadings, which on this page they call qualifiers. Uh, I'll leave that for another day and we'll go back to the PubMed homepage. And I'm going to go into the mesh database and I'm going to enter the term multiple sclerosis. And here I can look at the term and I usually bring your attention to the other parts of the term, but the subheadings are here. So these are our available subheadings. And you can search with one, none, or more than one. I work with a lot of people in rehab, so I might choose the multiple sclerosis mesh term, and I might add rehabilitation as a subheading. So now I'm going to add to search builder. We get the mesh term, multiple sclerosis, forward slash rehabilitation, the tag is mesh, and then if we search PubMed, then our first record, all of these records, in fact, at the bottom of the record, if you scroll down, are going to have multiple sclerosis forward slash rehabilitation. So it found records where rehabilitation subheading is attached to the term, the mesh term, multiple sclerosis. So now let's look at how to float the subheading and make this whole search just a little bit broader. So I'm going to go back and we had, remember 1931 results, 1,931. I'm going to go back to the mesh record and I'm going to just add multiple sclerosis. And because we saw how to add a subheading with a, a field tag, so I'm just, I'm going to type that in with and. So multiple sclerosis and rehabilitation and this time we'll do sh subheading and now i'll click search pubmed and we got 2113 results now the difference is let's look at this number one when we scroll down here to the bottom and look at the mesh terms there is multiple sclerosis but multiple sclerosis has therapy and psychology. We actually find rehabilitation attached to the mesh term disabled persons. So that is one way to do it. So let's look at the difference. We did multiple sclerosis with the attached subheading, rehabilitation, 1900, multiple sclerosis, and the floating subheading, rehabilitation, we got 2100. Now there's lots of ways to do this. You could search on you could use keywords instead. I mean, just to look at the difference. And this is part of being able to search well is being able to sort of test and see the difference and what you would prefer one over the other. So just multiple sclerosis as a keyword and rehabilitation as a keyword with 
the field tag TW got a lot more. But today I'm talking about the subheading. So let's go back one more time to the mesh entry for multiple sclerosis. And then I just wanted to show you that you're not bound to just one subheading. So if we wanted to do MS and rehab or therapy or diagnosis, then we can add the search builder. And it would make sense that you would choose or here, but it seems to know what you want. And that when I click add to search builder, um, because I've selected these three simultaneously, it says multiple sclerosis with the attached subheading diagnosis or multiple sclerosis with the attached subheading rehab or with the attached subheading therapy. And we'll search PubMed and we get 36,274. And again, if we looked at any one of these, we're going to see MS with one of those attached subheadings. Here it is. When would you use subheadings and when wouldn't you use subheadings? I use subheadings to do a quick reference question. So if a person has a question about a very specific thing and I find the perfect mesh term and I see that there's a really good relevant subheading, then I'll use that. And I probably wouldn't use it for Evidence synthesis, systematic reviews, or scoping reviews, because the goal is to be really sensitive and really broad. Um, let's just for comparison's sake, mesh. Um, let's just for comparison's sake now look at the difference here. So if I go into advanced, multiple sclerosis, <laughs> I can't say, multiple sclerosis as a mesh term with no subheadings, 73,000. But when we added those subheadings, either attached or floating, we narrowed it down by quite a bit. And so that's what you would want to keep in mind when you're building your own search. Does your search, does your topic or your scope of your project justify being that narrow in your search? And a lot of times it would just for like a typical reference question or you're trying to find this or that. Uh, but when you're trying to find a lot, I would keep it wide open by using the broadest application available and then just to end things i'll show you um, if you've watched my videos you know that we're never searching with just the uh just the medical subject heading we're always adding a redundant keyword and we'll get more 104,909. something else to think about when you decide to use subheadings in your searches it's really hard to translate those into other databases. So other databases may have a uh, an index term for multiple sclerosis, but they probably don't have subheadings that are exactly the same. And so that would be pretty difficult to translate. So I might do either the broadest possible scenario or something where I float it as uh, a floating subheading. Um, if I confused you more than I guess that was probably my goal and feel free to leave a comment or ask questions if it's not very clear uh, because it's not. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.